This is the new Nikon ZR, their first video focused camera and the clearest first sign of major collaboration between Nikon and RED since the acquisition. And it could just be about to shake up the industry. Nikon and RED have managed to make a camera which feels like one of the most convenient, practical and small cinema cameras on the market, while also being simultaneously one of the most powerful. We're here at the amazing studio spaces in London. We have a few hours to use the camera and Nikon have kindly set up some pretty amazing situations for us to film with it, like this drummer. So this is very much going to be a quick first look kind of video. So let's get right into it. At its heart, the ZR is the same camera as the Z6 Mark III. Same sensor, same IBIS system, same frame rates, and so on. It's just in a video focused body design with extra video features added. So this is a similar approach to Sony's FX3 and FX30 or Canon's new camera, which was launched yesterday. So it's a 24 megapixel 6K sensor, which can do up to 60p in 6K, 60p in 4K with the full sensor or 120p in 4K with a 1.5 times crop. It has exactly the same autofocus system with the same amazing subject detection and tracking. It has all of the same codecs that the Z6 Mark III has. So ProRes 422 and ProRes RAW, Nikon's NRAW codec, H.265 and H.264. Everything you'd expect from Nikon for video use. But then we have the bits which RED have brought to the party. Firstly is a new codec. They have a new version of RED's RAW R3D codec called R3D-NE. NE stands for Nikon Edition. It's an optimized 12-bit log RAW format designed specifically for Nikon by RED engineers. Now we don't know exactly what's going on here yet, how it's different to the normal R3D codecs, what the file sizes are like, any of that. But we do know that you can use all of the same frame rates and crop options as Nikon's RAW codec. So that's 6K or 4K up to 60p with the full sensor or cropping in 1.5 times to get that 4K 120. And that is a big deal. Normally, RED cameras with R3D would crop into the sensor in order to go down to lower resolutions. So having 4K 60p with the full sensor in R3D RAW, that's amazing to see. Then there's the color science. This might be the same sensor as the Z6 Mark III, but in the R3D codec, RED's imaging pipeline completely takes over. It's their RED Wide Gamut RGB and their Log 3G10 formats. So it has the exact same image pipeline as other RED cameras, like the Komodo X and the V-Raptor X. This also means that they've been able to up the dynamic range of the sensor to 15 plus stops. Perhaps the area of the camera that surprised me the most though is the audio. This is the first camera to have 32-bit float audio recording internally. Yes, Lumix has it, but that's with their XLR add-on for the hot shoe. This, this is built into the camera itself. And not only that, but it also works in all video formats. Well, apart from 8-bit H.264. So that is ProRes, that's H.265, that's Nikon RAW, and the new RED R3D NE format as well. Beyond that, they've massively tried to improve the built-in microphones so that they can be used for more than just scratch audio. The camera has three microphones on it and uses Nokia's Ozo technology to turn these into a 3D feeling immersive sound. It also lets you choose from five different pickup patterns for different environments. They also have a hot shoe connector now for the first time on a Nikon camera. So they make this smart little shotgun microphone with a bigger tally light built onto it to go onto this hot shoe. But they're also going to be working with Tascam to make a version of their XLR top unit for it. So that's the same as Canon and Fujifilm do for their cameras. Apart from this, you know, there's a normal 3.5 millimeter audio input on the camera itself. And there is, of course, a headphone jack. Let's look over the rest of the physical design. It, it is tiny. This is a really compact and flat camera and it weighs only 540 grams. Yes, the obvious comparison is to the Sony FX3 without its top handle attached, 
But in many ways, this is also similar in concept to the Blackmagic Pocket cameras, or perhaps the Lumix S9, or the Sony A7C Mark II. It has no EVF, and one CF Express card slot, which is on the bottom of the camera by the battery slot. Well, it does have a micro SD card slot as well hidden inside there, but that's only for the 8-bit small files, so probably most people are going to be ignoring that for the most part, sadly. It also doesn't have full-size HDMI. It's a micro HDMI port. Luckily though, you'll probably not need to actually use that HDMI port quite as much because the flip-out screen is incredibly good. It is massive. And it's the first thing you notice when you pick up the camera. It's four inches. It has a resolution of 1280 by 800 and it's 1000 nits bright with full P3 color space. And it makes a real big difference. It's a huge step up over the screens which we normally see on small cameras like this. It is a little light on physical controls compared to other similar cameras though. We do have two jog wheels, one on the front, one on the back, and three function buttons on the top. A zoom rocker, which is perfect for their fantastic 28 to 135 millimeter f4 servo zoom lens, and then easy access through the touchscreen for all of the main controls, including a nice new monitoring quick menu where you can toggle tools on and off and change your monitor brightness quickly rather than having it buried away in menus. Very nice. Then on the front is Nikon's Z mount. Hardly a surprise, but it is a very relevant part of the narrative of this camera because it's a bit of a secret weapon for Nikon. Not only does Nikon have a very full and comprehensive lineup of incredible lenses at a variety of different price points, but because it is such a short flange distance at 16 millimeters, adapters can just about be made to use some of the other brand's lenses on Nikon cameras. For example, we've been using the Megadap E-mount adapter quite a bit to use Sony E-mount lenses on Nikon cameras with full autofocus support and it works really well. So that makes Nikon one of the only brands that you can swap to from Sony and still use your existing lenses. That is a really big deal and something which I still think many people don't know about yet. So that is the Nikon ZR, the first true result of this collaboration between Nikon and RED. It is a tiny, compact cinema camera, which has features that you'd expect from cameras that easily cost twice this amount, if not more. This is a real statement piece from Nikon, that with RED at their side, they are well and truly taking the pro video market seriously. I mean, this could just be one of the best compact cinema cameras on the market now. If you want to pre-order one for your own work, head over to Pro V, of course. And once the camera comes out, we're gonna be doing lots more content around this, events, streams, all of that. So keep an eye out for more to come. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.